have spoken to many of the radiation oncologists they are not at all aware recently passed out i'm not telling about like people who are not updated recently passed out on oral oncology radiation oncologists who are supposed to understand or know this recent advancements in their field are not aware of this tobacco de addiction so in this cases where we use uh, to treat the acupuncture points in your ear we radiate to uh, with the laser to stimulate these points so this will reduce your affinity or affection towards tobacco your radiation it is mandatorily recommended by the oncology journals these days because they ask you to start with a dose of laser photomodulation biomodulation help your cells to get more energy and then you start your radiation so the damage which is going to happen will be reduced plastic surgeon comes not a pediatric not a dentist a plastic pediatric plastic surgeon comes to do the, the line angles and point angles we forgot we are basically meant to heal a lot of things so doctor can you discuss some of the unexplored dental areas where the lasers can be implemented yes apart from our normal clinical practice there are a lot of areas where we as dentists can pitch in and do a lot of job which are still unexplored for, for us one is laser assisted oncology which means you treat mucositis cases which is induced due to radiation in a cancer patients full blown mucositis in the oral cavity we can really do a lot of work there second thing is laser assisted in tethered oral tissues help in pediatric patients where an infant is born and she's got a latching difficulty breastfeeding difficulties because of tongue ties buckle ties or lip ties we as pediatric dentist or as dentist who are trained in lasers can be of really good help to those children who are suffering another one is laser neurology and the very interesting and reason one is tobacco de addiction so in this cases where we use uh, to treat the acupuncture points in your ear we radiate to uh, with the laser to stimulate these points so this will reduce your affinity or affection towards tobacco so there are a lot of studies and articles published regarding this if anybody is interested they can definitely go and search in uh, pubmed or scholar for that articles doctor you mentioned about uh, mucositis how often do you find this case this mucositis case you might not find it as a walk in patient in your normal dental clinic or very rarely these patients you find can find a lot number of patients in a cancer hospital where they do a lot of radiation uh, chemotherapy and all that so what happens is that these patients because of the oxygen deficit and all to the cells in your uh, oral mucosa because of the radiation which is happening in the head and neck area they undergo damage so the full mouth it can be grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 mucositis in case of a grade 3 mucositis the full mouth will be ulcers bleeding and ne necros tissue in that cases the patient won't be able to take in their proper feeding they'll be on liquid diet which will deteriorate their health this makes them in uh, ab unable to take their next dose of radiation so their treatment itself is not happening because of this mucositis so these patient almost all patient who is undergoing radiation will have some grade of mucositis and you have you when you go to a hospital every patient who is under the radiation is your patient also so in a clinic may not be there but if you are associated with a cancer hospital then every patient is a potential patient for laser oncology laser assisted oncology and also doctor how do you treat this mucositis with the help of the lasers treatment part uh, it is basically laser photobiomodulation as i mentioned which we are doing here we are talking to the cells normally it takes around 1 uh, 3 to 5 sessions depending upon how severe it is so you can just radiate those areas with a particular pot protocol particular wavelength particular dose that has to be known to the person who is treating and then for a 3 to 5 days you can definitely see good quality of improvement in healing of those tissues uh doctor how effective are lasers in treating mucositis compared to that of the traditional methods frankly speaking there are there is no traditional method of treatment for this mucositis it is just palliative treatment either by topical uh, pain management by topical lignocaine gels antifungal and antibacterial uh, ointments for preventing supra infection and all that so lasers doesn't definitely have a treatment plan for them so without having nothing just by giving a palliative care uh, letting the patient deteriorate on health we have a treatment here pro proper protocol of treatment so we cannot compare between no treatment and a treatment right so that is how important is lasers in oncology so is there any method to prevent the mucositis right? prevention these days according to their um, uh, journals 
this laser photobiomodulation is recommended as a prophylactic dose before you start your radiation. It is mandatorily recommended by the oncology journals these days because they ask you to start with a dose of laser photobiomodulation, mm. help your cells get more energy and then you start your radiation so the damage which is going to happen will be reduced mm. and then once you have got your radiation continue with this one dose of laser photobiomodulation during your treatment course so it will help you prevent getting a full-blown mucositis. Doctor since uh, mucositis is related to the oral cavity so who takes care of this particular problem is it the physician or the dentist especially in the mainstream hospitals Yes, that is a very interesting question because oral cavity our area to take care and some of these big, big hospitals have a dental setup there and some of them refer it to their dental. Again, we as dentists, somewhere we are stuck between the line angles and point angles. We forgot we are basically meant to heal a lot of things. So when the thing is referred to the dental department of that hospitals, the dentist might be seeing in some of the hospitals. When hospitals doesn't have a dedicated dental wing, the medical professionals themselves take care of these things. But both the times, I don't know how much the dental dentist practicing there is aware of the laser, laser protocols for this. They also tend to prescribe this topical ointments and uh, let it heal slowly, let it take its own time to heal. So this way as laser people who are getting trained or interested in lasers can definitely go pitch in. Like we have to open, knock the doors, let them understand because I have spoken to many of the radiation oncologists, they are not at all aware. Recently passed out, I'm not telling about like people who are not updated. Recently passed out on oral oncology, radiation oncologists who are supposed to understand or know this recent advancements in their field are not aware of this. So we have to go talk to them let them know that this is possible, this is our area to treat. Let us do what we can do for those patients and then show them the results. What are the results you can achieve with this treatment in your patients? They'll be definitely shocked to see the healing in within five days of a laser photobiomodulation treatment. So, doctor, how does the cost of laser treatment for mucositis compare to traditional treatments? Cost doctor, you cannot put a price tag for this kind of a treatment because there can be two types of cancer patients. One patient, because of the mucositis, they are not, not able to take their next radiation, which is deteriorating their fight with the survival of cancer. Second patient, uh, they will be in the last stage of cancer. The doctors have given up hope. They will be leaving for another six months to one year with this grade 3 mucositis in their mouth. So both the ways, if, if you are doing it for the first patient, you are helping them survive back from come back to life. right? The second type of patients who are like going to leave for another six months to one year, if you are giving them healing, if you are helping them heal in this mucositis, for this kind of patients, if, if they are going to leave for another six months to one year and you are helping them heal and take their food properly, drink properly, sleep without pain and ble bleeding gum, um, tissues and pus in their mouth. So they are, you are adding better life to the remaining days. They don't have a big life, long life to live. They have only a very limited life, but you are adding more days, peaceful, pain-free days to their remaining life at least they can eat properly drink water properly all this so if there is no cost we cannot judge a good cost for this treatments your patients be it the son or daughter of the patient or be it the father of the patient they'll be more than happy to give you if you are giving a proper healing to their patient you you get paid for the solutions they give there is no better solution than this for them so they'll more than happy to give you your treatment charges so, doctor, what is the future of uh, lasers in periodontics? Um, as I am a pediatric dentist, I would say one of the new areas in periodontics is tethered oral tissues. So, from infancy, the child if is born with a tethered oral tissue, be it a tongue tie, lip tie, bucket tie, whatever it is, will have difficulty in feeding, first thing. So, initially this used to be get ignored a lot because uh, they'll ask the mother to wean and shift to bottle feeding or tell the mother that you're not producing enough milk. So now lactation consultants are seeing the children and they are diagnosing this. So what they do once it is diagnosed is that all these maternity hospitals, they either try to ignore it because taking the child infant less than 10 days old, 5 days old, 
under a surgical procedure is difficult for them they have to take the child under ga a plastic surgeon comes not a pediatric not a dentist a plastic pediatric plastic surgeon comes to do the procedure and then they take the child under ga they have to infuse vitamin k supplements because of the bleeding immature bleeding and clotting time all this is a big procedure so if the child is able to gain weight if the child is thriving basically they'll try to ignore this and delay the surgery as long as possible if the child is not at all thriving if it is very severe type then only they tend to take this under ga and for one procedure they charge around 30 fund free nectomy they charge around 35 to 40 k getting the point so from there a pediatric laser specialist because we need not take the child under ga we are Uh, trained in handling the children for all the procedures second thing they, we don't have to infuse any kind of vitamin k supplements because the surgery itself is bloodless so all this advantages from 40k you can do it for a very much lesser price for the patient so that is the advantage of pitching in into these fields where the where where you have to get an attachment to a maternity hospital where these kinds of cases are seen very commonly so in walking into a clinic with a 5 day 5 day five day old baby telling doctor my child is not able to latch because of the tongue tie you may not see that ever so you yourself should go get attached to a maternity hospital tag get a tag as a consultant pediatric laser specialist and then do all this for the patients second thing is that going ahead also a lot of pediatricians tend to ignore this because they see tongue ties as one for speech difficulties that is the only thing they they tend to see they don't see the importance of tongue in the facial growth and development for the widening of palate they don't see upper nasal obstructions because if the palate is constricted definitely the airway is going to be compromised it's a long cycle so one thing is not right it will affect the whole facial growth so very constricted palate these days open mouth posture sleep apnea all this is tied to your tongue tie so as a pediatric dentist i would say lasers are the best thing to do a surgery in a pediatric patient so all these areas we pediatric dentists can definitely pitch in and do a lot of job there uh it's been a pleasure talking to you doctor any final message for the viewers thank you dr prince uh, it was pleasure talking to you also i feel your viewers also will uh, get advantage and information from our talk and more people should come in uh, get inspired and come into laser dentistry and as we discussed in the first question that uh, laser dentistry should be the future of indian dental culture by 2025 i'm sure you found this conversation with dr akshaya enlightening and enjoyable please do show your support by liking and subscribing the channel do join our whatsapp group wherein we post free ads mds consultations sale of equipments the link is given in the description and in the future we'll dig deep into the future of dentistry for time being signing off dr prince